This video reviews mechanisms of potassium regulation. The extracellular fluid concentration of potassium is regulated at about 4.2 milliequivalents per liter. Normal blood potassium concentration is 3.5 to 5 milliequivalents per liter. Plasma potassium is largely regulated through renal mechanisms that conserve or eliminate potassium and a transcellular shift between the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid compartments. Renal regulation of potassium occurs due to sodium-potassium exchange due to aldosterone and potassium-hydrogen exchange. The major route for potassium elimination is the kidney. Unlike other electrolytes, the regulation of potassium elimination is controlled by secretion from the blood into the tubular filtrate rather than through reabsorption from the tubular filtrate into the blood. Potassium is filtered in the glomerulus, reabsorbed along with sodium and water in the proximal tubule and with sodium and chloride in the thick ascending loop of Henle, and then secreted into the late distal and cortical collecting tubules for elimination in the urine. The latter mechanism serves to fine tune the concentration of potassium in the extracellular fluid. Extracellular intracellular exchange in the potassium occurs via the sodium potassium ATPase pump and through potassium hydrogen exchange. Let's look at renal regulation of potassium. Aldosterone plays an essential role in regulating potassium elimination by the kidney via a sodium potassium exchange mechanism located in the late distal and cortical collecting tubules of the kidney. In the presence of aldosterone, sodium is transported back into the blood and potassium is secreted in the tubular filtrate for elimination in the urine. Aldosterone helps to regulate blood volume, blood pressure, sodium, potassium, and hydrogen ion. Let's walk through the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system and through the functions of aldosterone. Decreased blood pressure, blood volume, and sodium concentration stimulate the release of renin from the juxtaglomerular or JG cells in the kidney. Sympathetic nervous system activity, such as with the stress response, also signals the release of renin. Renin is released into the blood where it converts angiotensinogen, which is produced by the liver, into angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 then travels to the lungs where it encounters angiotensin converting enzyme. Angiotensin converting enzyme converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 has two effects. Angiotensin 2 acts on the vascular smooth muscle to cause vasoconstriction, which increases blood pressure. Angiotensin 2 also stimulates the adrenal gland to release aldosterone. Aldosterone then travels to the kidneys, where it increases sodium and water reabsorption, thereby increasing blood volume and blood pressure. And it decreases blood potassium and hydrogen ion by secreting them into the urine. Thus, aldosterone decreases blood potassium levels. Potassium is also regulated through potassium hydrogen exchange systems. There is a potassium hydrogen exchange mechanism in the cortical collecting tubules of the kidney. When plasma potassium levels are increased, potassium is secreted into the urine and hydrogen ion is reabsorbed into the blood. This can lead to a decrease in pH and metabolic acidosis. Conversely, when potassium levels are low, potassium is reabsorbed into the blood and hydrogen ion is secreted in the urine. This can lead to an increase in pH and a metabolic alkalosis. Thus, changes in blood hydrogen concentration 
can lead to changes in blood pH. The hydrogen and potassium ions, which are positively charged, can be exchanged between the intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid in a cation shift. This represents the intracellular space, and outside the cell is the extracellular space. Increased potassium, or increased pH or alkalosis, can drive potassium into the cell, shifting hydrogen ion out of the cell. The opposite also occurs. Decreased potassium or decreased pH or acidosis can drive hydrogen ion into the cell, shifting potassium out of the cell. Thus, changes in potassium can lead to pH imbalance and changes in pH can lead to potassium imbalance. So, Acidosis can lead to hyperkalemia, and hyperkalemia can lead to acidosis, while alkalosis can lead to hypokalemia, and hypokalemia can lead to alkalosis. Finally, potassium can be exchanged for sodium via the sodium potassium ATPase pump. To avoid an increase in extracellular potassium levels, excess potassium is temporarily shifted into red blood cells and other cells such as those of the muscle, liver, and bone. This is controlled by the sodium potassium ATPase membrane pump and the permeability of the ion channels in the cell membrane. Thus, sodium potassium ATPase pump lowers blood potassium. It does this by moving three sodium ions out of the cell and transporting two potassium ions into the cell via active transport. The sodium-potassium ATPase pump is activated by increased potassium in the blood, insulin, and catecholamines such as epinephrine and norepinephrine. In addition, beta-adrenergic agonists have similar effects and lower blood potassium levels. These include drugs such as pseudoephedrine and albuterol. This concludes our review of mechanisms of potassium regulation.